Welcome to Baker's Math Class. Today we're going to be looking at combining functions. While this might sound hard at first, you'll soon find out that you already know how to do most of it. First, let's look at something simple. 13 plus 8, just a simple addition problem. 13 plus 8 comes out to be 21. 13 minus 8, another simple subtraction problem. 13 minus 8 is 5. 13 times 8. You might need a calculator to do this one, but that's okay. 13 times 8 would be 104. 13 divided by 8, we can't come up with an actual number for this, so let's just leave it as a fraction. 13 over 8. I'm sure everybody is able to do those four problems. And believe it or not, combining functions is the exact same thing. Now, all I'm going to do is we're going to look at it as combining functions. So I have f of x equals 13 and g of x equals 8. You notice the same two numbers that we had before. f plus g of x is actually the same thing as just saying f of x plus g of x, which is the exact same thing as we did before. It's 13 plus 8 is 21. So notice how this is just taking what we did before with the addition and just putting them in terms of a function with the f of x and the g of x. If we look at the next one, it's the same thing. This one's with subtraction. So I have f of x minus g of x. So I have 13 minus 8, which is 5. So we're just taking it and substituting the things in for the f of x and the g of x. This one, we've got multiplication. Notice how there's nothing between the f and the g. So that's f of x times g of x. So that's 13 times 8, which we figured out before was 104. And then finally, the division one. Same thing. This one's just f of x over g of x. So I've got the 13 over the 8. And that's all we're doing. That's why nothing's really different between the combining functions than the simple arithmetic. The thing that's going to change is we can add in variables and stuff to the problem instead of just simple numbers. And that's where it's going to make it a little more complicated, but not too bad. So let's look at that now. So I have f of x is 3x plus 4, and g of x is 2x minus 6. So I have the f plus g of x. So just like before, that's the f of x plus g of x. And just like before, I'm going to replace it with what they are. So I have 3x plus 4 plus 2x minus 6. The only difference is now I have to combine my terms. So I have 3x plus 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my parentheses, plus 2x minus 6. And now I combine like terms. So 3x plus 2x is 5x. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And that is f plus g of x. That's it simple. We're just adding things together that are the same. Just like the addition one, I have a subtraction one. I have the same functions, and I have f minus g of x. Subtraction adds one little wrinkle to it, however. So I have f of x minus g of x. So same thing, 3x plus 4 minus 2x minus 6. Now, when I get rid of these parentheses, I have to distribute that negative sign through. So I have 3x plus 4 minus 2x, and it's going to be a plus 6, because negative and a negative make a positive. A lot of times people get the negative 2x, but forget to change the sign of the other one. Now we're going to do the same thing we did for my addition. I'm going to combine like terms. So 3x minus 2x is just x. 4 plus 6 is 10. So my final answer to this one would be x plus 10. And multiplication of functions, we have the added thing of that we have to do foiling for um, that part. We have to multiply the binomials. So I still have the f of x, and it's times g of x this time. So I have 3x plus 4 times 2x minus 6. Now to get rid of my parentheses, I have to FOIL. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 6 is negative 18x. 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times negative, tw or negative 6 is negative 24. Combine like terms, so I have 6x squared minus 10x minus 24. So when we do multiplication, we have to do a little bit more work because we have the variables and their binomials, so I have to do the foiling there. Finally, we have the division, which looks the most complicated, but 
actually ends up being one of the easiest ones because we don't actually have to do much. It's just f of x over g of x. And since there's nothing in these functions I can actually reduce, my answer is just 3x plus 4 over 2x minus 6. And I'm actually done with this problem. I can leave it just as the fraction right there. So the only difference between what we're doing now and what we did before with the arithmetic is we're adding the x values in there. We kind of have to simplify the problems. So combining functions, as long as you can do simple arithmetic and the simple algebra of combining like terms, actually is pretty simple to do. So hopefully this video demystifies combining functions a little bit and gives you the confidence to try them. Want more great videos like this for me? Well, like this video and subscribe to my channel and come with me on my journey through algebra and geometry with my students this year.